Here are solutions to homework set number 11 for ECE 341. In this homework set, we're looking at Markov chains. Now the first problem's a classic problem in Markov chains. I have four people playing hot potato. If A has the hot potato, well, every second he tasks the potatoes. If A has it, A will keep it 30% of the time, toss it to B 20%, toss it to C 50%. If B has the hot potato, each toss, B keeps it 40% of the time, passes to C 30%, passes to D 30%, and so on. Given that A has the hot potato, who has the hot potato at time K? Now there's a couple ways to solve this. In problem one, we're looking at matrix multiplication. I first set up a state transition matrix, kind of like so. What this says is that if this is the probability that A, B, C, D have the hot potatoes. Suppose A has the hot potato. So this is 1, 0, 0, 0. When I multiply, this is where the potato is after one cost, toss. This first column is times A. So if A has the hot potato, after one toss, A will have it 30% of the time. A gives it to B 20%. A gives it to C 50%. If B has the, has the hot potato, column 2, then A or B never passes it to A, B keeps it 40% of the time, passes to C 30%, passes to D 30%. And likewise for C, if C has it, C passes it uh, or keeps it 60% of the time, passes to D 40% and D. Notice that, that all the columns add to one. That's required for probabilities. If A has the hot potato, it's got to go somewhere. So if I have it at zero tosses, x0, I know where it is at one toss. Multiply by this matrix, I have where it is at two tosses. So let's call that matrix M. Then I can find out where you are after one toss by multiplying by, multiplying by M, two tosses, multiply by M squared, three tosses, M cubed, 10 tosses, multiply by M to the 10th. So this is where the hot potato is after 10 tosses. A has it with a 23% probability, B has it with 7% probability, and so on. So that's one way to solve a Markov chain matrix multiplication. A uh, second way to solve is using Z-transforms. So in MATLAB, there's a state space that you have Zx equals Ax plus Bu. This is more for digital filters. Y equals CX plus DU. In this case, A is my M matrix, state transition matrix. B is my initial condition. C is of those four states, what combination do I want to look at? And D is zero. So A is M, X zero is A has the hot potato initially. I want to look at the first state, that's A. Throw that in MATLAB. That's the MATLAB command state space. <clears throat> and this is uh, how many seconds between tosses. And let's just say I toss the potato every second. Convert that to Z transform. And here's the transform. And an oddity of doing it this way is you're always off by Z. Multiply by Z, and that's the Z transform for A. Now to find A of K, take the inverse Z transform. Do a partial fraction expansion. Then take the inverse C transform, and here's each term. These two together give you these two terms. And that's A of k. Plug in k equals 10, I get the same answer as problem number one. That's the second way to solve, using Z transforms. A third way to solve is using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The A matrix is a 4x4 four four system. It's got eigenvalues, it has eigenvectors. Find the eigenvalues. Uh, note that the eigenvalues are the poles. These are the roots. There's one at 1, 0 0.35, 0 0.44, plus or minus j, 0.32. Eigenvalues of A, exact same answer. I'm going to do that backwards. Well, that's in polar form. Um, puts it in rectangular form. I also have eigenvectors. Now, what this tells you is x of k, I know what the answer is. It's going to be some constant 
times the first eigenvector times its eigenvalue plus another constant times its eigenvector, the second column, times its eigenvalue to the k, and so on and so on. Plug in k equals zero, I just have the initial condition is a, b, c, d times the eigenvectors. Uh, to find these constants, just take the inverse of the eigenvector matrix times your initial, con initial condition, and that gives you a, b, c, d. So there's a, b, c, d. That's how much this initial condition excites each of these modes, each of the eigenvectors. So I can write down the answer. So this is your a, this guy right here, times its eigenvector, the first column, times its eigenvalue to the k, plus the second entry, b, times its eigenvector, the second eigenvector, times its eigenvalue to the k, plus c, times the third eigenvector, times the third eigenvalue to the k, plus d, times the fourth eigenvector, times its eigenvalue to the k. And there's your answer. Um, it, once you have eigenvalues, eigenvectors, this is actually a pretty easy problem to solve. Just needs a matrix inverse. If I combine these terms, I can simplify this slightly. So let's combine the eigenvector with a constant. And here's another way to write it. x of k is this eigenvector times 1, plus this eigenvector times a damped cosine, plus the complex conjugate times this complex conjugate, plus this one. As k goes to infinity, these terms all go away. Here's my steady state solution, which is the same that we got in problem number one. Same thing you'll get using z-transforms. So that's the third way to solve. Problem four looks at Markov chains with absorbing states. If two teams are playing a best, well, playing a series where you have to win by two to win the series, then I'll call my states. I'm at plus zero, plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two. If I start out at plus two, then the match is over. Somebody's up by two games, and that's what this says. If I start out at plus two, uh, one second later, team A has still won the match. If I start at minus two, team B has won the match. Match is over. The other ones are where I take this into account. So if I'm at plus one, this column, 60% chance A wins, I go to plus two. 15% chance I tie, stay at plus one. 25% chance I lose, go to even. Likewise for plus zero and minus one. So there's my state transition matrix. Let's call this A. Put that in MATLAB. If I start out at even, I can tell you the probability that A wins after N tosses. And that would just be your A to the N times X zero times C. So I want to pick off this state, plus two, meaning A wins. Uh, repeat for n equals 0 to 10. And what I wind up with is the probability that a wins after 0 games is 0. One game is 0. You can't be up 2 after one game. Two games, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is one way to solve the Markov chain. Just do matrix multiplication. There is a second way to solve. I can solve using z transforms. Have my a matrix, x0, c. This my D matrix is always zero. Uh, one is I'm going to play the game every one second or one time period. Find the Z transform uh, times Z, and that's going to give you A of Z. Now find the inverse Z transform. Do partial fraction expansion. Have each. You know, this term is zero, so just ignore it. That's the probability that A wins after k games. If I repeat, this is multi matrix multiplication, problem four. This is the equation that I had right here. Uh, notice the answers are the same. Maybe a little bit of rounding because I took this to four decimal places. Same answer. So either way works. The last problem is kind of a hard one. 
this is playing a game that's similar to tennis. And this game is going to be the first player to reach three points win by two. So there's a couple ways that A could win. They're backing up. And suppose A's got a 60% chance of winning any given game. There's a couple ways A can win. A could go 3-0, and o, the match is over. A could win 3-1, to one, which actually means that A wins and I start out at 2-1. Because if I start out at 3-0, and o, the match is over. A uh, third way that A can win is that A wins after going 2-2. Two and two. So this is when you go into a Markov chain. These are binomial distributions. Add them all up and have the total odds of A winning. So the probability of A going 3 and 0 is a binomial distribution. I've got three coin tosses, I get three heads. Odds of the heads, or a win, are 0 0.6. Odds of a loss, are 0, or 0.4. Multiply it all out, 20% chance A is going to go 3 and 0. A can also win after going 2 and 1. So three games, flip, pick two for heads. I got two heads, one tail. And A has to win the next game gives you 0.2592. Third way to win, I go to, to deuce, two and two. So I'll play four games, pick two, I get two heads, 0 0.6 squared, 0 0.4 squared, 34% chance to go to deuce. Once you get to deuce, it goes to into a Markov chain. I start out at even, two and two. 60% chance A wins, go to plus one. 40% chance B wins, go to minus one. If I get to plus two, the match is over, A wins. Go to minus two, the match is over, B wins. So what I want to know is what's the probability that A wins if you go into match play? So here's your state transition matrix. I start out at even. Let's just take A to a large number. After 100 rounds, 69% chance that A wins the match, 30% chance B wins the match. So the total odds are then probability that A won going 3 and 0, plus the probability A wins going 3 and 1, plus the probability that A wins after going 2 and 2. Add them all up, I get 71%. So with this format, A has a 71% chance of winning. So tennis is actually pretty complicated to calculate. It's both the binomial distribution and a Markov chain. And that is homework set number 11 for ECE 341.